Well, it's uh, getting on into the tail end of October. Definitely a lot of rut sign, pre-rut, good bucks running during daylight. We got some sparring going on. Great time to be calling. We slip in on this spot, big long ridge that stretches out to a big destination food field that we're hoping to catch the deer as they're coming back in the morning here. We've got hinge cut bedding up the north side of this ridge and the top of the ridge is a, just a big main travel corridor where there's lots of community scrapes and rubs. Uh, a lot of deer communication goes down on this ridge. Historically, it's always good in there about this time of year. Just going on kind of a gut feeling, we had an idea that there were some good bucks in that area, so we decided we'd slip in there and do some calling first thing in the morning and, and see if we couldn't get something shook up. So hinge cutting is obviously a practice that we use a lot with AWS. It is what it sounds like, cutting a tree, you know, halfway, two thirds of the way through, leaving it still intact so that it hinges over and stays connected to the, to the stump. And basically what happens is the, the tree will arch over and the cambium layer is not broken on the tree and allows the tree to stay alive. Puts tons of food on the ground, also puts security cover on the ground, allows the sunlight to come down through the canopy. It's really crucial for bedding. We do kind of two different styles of bedding, a loose open bedding that's kind of what we call combination bedding areas and then thicker, more dense pockets that we call buck bedding areas. And we've kind of scattered that out, positioned that out along the ridge so that bucks will come through on a northwest wind, checking the top side of the bedding pockets. And when they do that, that just happens to put them on the top of the ridge and, and force them to come right by the stand. Late October is my favorite. It's, it's one of my favorite times of the year to be in a bow stand, um, just because there's a lot of activity. Bucks are really responding well to calls, grunts, bleats, rattling, you name it. And also, big bucks are a lot more predictable and, and still a little bit patternable at that point. The first two weeks of November can be so unpredictable with, you know, depending on how the moon hits and which, you know, how many does are in estrus, the bucks can be running, they can be running at night, you might never see them. So I, I particularly like uh, the tail end of October just because bucks seem like they're ready to communicate, they're ready to respond, but they're just a lot easier to get nailed down. Now on this particular hunt, I'm hunting with my buddy Kyle. Kyle and I have been friends since college. He helped me out on the farm a little bit and we got some time to be out of the combine. So we decided that uh, we we're gonna slip in on this spot where I had an encounter with a great buck the weekend before. We're gonna keep the strategy just the same. We're gonna go right back in there on this hardwood ridge and see if we can't call this buck back in. It's the morning of October 27th. It's getting to be that time of year where things are just getting ready to kick off. We're sitting up on a beautiful oak hardwood ridge. All kinds of bedding ridges around us. We're gonna do a lot of calling, you know, rattling, grunting, bleeding, and stuff like that this morning. So off and on throughout the morning, what we like to do is, especially if there's no visual activity that we can see or no, no deer that are within visible range, is we like to do blind calling sequences where we might start with, with a grunt and a bleat and then you know kind of elevate to a chase sequence and then maybe even finish with some rattling later on. We just like to do that every so often, every half hour, every 45 minutes, just to kind of throw a wide net, cast a wide net, try to reach out to more deer. Shortly after a, one of Kyle's calling sequences, there was just this explosion of chaos. And I looked back up the ridge just to see all of a sudden all these white tails and does running back down the ridge. Lo and behold, a big buck came in to investigate what was going on as well. Uh, I'm starting to zoom in on him and, and try to get everything ready. And I realized pretty quickly that this is the same exact buck that I had the encounter with the weekend before out of the same tree.
trashed him. That's a buck though, that's him. What just happened? Dude. With a buck of this age class, uh, you know, they're not gonna tolerate very much pressure and that's why this was so huge. There are several factors that, that made this hunt a success. To control our ground scent, to control our human odor with the phase products and completely encapsulate those human odor molecules and, and surround the dander on our skin, that kept us clean as we accessed this stand in and out. And it kept the buck feeling safe and comfortable in there from the weekend that I seen him a whole week later until Kyle and I were able to slip in. What a beautiful deer. Congrats, man. That's awesome. I'm about worn out. What a hog. I don't know. The big, biggest body deer I've ever shot. He's freaking huge. Oh my god. I don't know how big. Look at that. Jesus. Yeah. It's gonna take a heck of a form to make that deer look even close. Yeah. So another big factor of this hunt being the habitat improvements that we did on the area. Going in there, putting some work into the farm, making it an area where deer want to be, where they want to bed, where they want to have interactions with other deer. That's a big factor, and, and because of the work and the improvements we did on the farm, that has made that spot historically good during that time window. And we knew that, hey, the tail end of October, first part of November, that spot's always cranking up really good because, you know, all these bedding, little bedding pockets, lots of does are utilizing them and the bucks are cruising the backside just like we set it up for. The land improvements and knowing historically what your deer are gonna be doing or when they're gonna be utilizing an area and how they're gonna be utilizing it, is a huge factor. We stayed in the grind, we stayed persistent, you know, it all worked out. Well,